Good morning on this Palm Sunday. The glory of Easter is at the very heart of the Christian gospel. It is the very center of the church's faith and worship. In the earliest days of the church, it was the only Christian festival, an annual celebration in all in one act of Christ's life, his death, resurrection, ascension, and his sending of the Holy Spirit. The celebration lasted for 50 days in one continuous festival of adoration, joy, and thanksgiving, ending on the Feast of Pentecost. By the fourth century, the church was adding to its celebration of Easter week, actually a week-long commemoration of the events which preceded our Lord's resurrection, bringing on Sunday with Jesus triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Christians would recall the final meal Jesus had with his disciples and his institution or introduction of the sacrament of the Eucharist. On the Friday, they would commemorate Christ's agony and death on the cross. On Saturday night, they would gather for the reading of the scripture for prayers, for the baptism of their new converts, and then, as the day of the resurrection dawned, for the joy, the joyful celebration of Easter. This week before Easter became known as Holy Week, and the focal points of this week would be the Sunday of the Passion with the Liturgy of the Palms, Monday, Thursday with foot washing, and a thanksgiving for the institution of the Eucharist. Good Friday, with a veneration of the cross. Easter Eve, Holy Saturday, with the great vigil, a paschal fire outside the church, initiation, and then the grand finale, Easter Sunday Eucharist. Today, as we listen to the gospel story, we recall how Jesus entered Jerusalem. Thousands of people were pouring into Jerusalem that week. Many were making that once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage to celebrate Passover in the temple. The journey itself was important. Travelers used this time to anticipate and prepare for the celebration to come. It was a time of great rejoicing, of remembering when God had liberated the people from the oppression of Pharaoh. In that day, Jerusalem was the place where people came to be in the presence of God. So expectations were high. Jesus knew where this procession would end. For some time now, he'd been telling or trying to tell his followers that this week would be like no other. But even his disciples didn't understand. On this pilgrimage into Jerusalem, one finds oneself walking mile after uphill mile, winding up through the sandy hills from Jericho, the lowest point on the face of the earth, through the Judean desert, climbing all the way. Halfway up, you reach sea level. You've already climbed a long way from the Jordan Valley, and you still have to ascend a fair-sized mountain. It is almost always hot, since it seldom ever rains, it's almost always dusty as well. That was the way the pilgrims came, with Jesus going on ahead, just as he had planned all along. This was to be the climax of his story, of his public career, of his vocation. He knew well what lay ahead and had set his face to go and meet it head on. Jesus never stopped announcing the kingdom of God but that announcement could only come true if he now embodied in himself the things that he'd been talking about. The living work of God was to heal and to save, and the forces of evil and death were at work to oppose him. But this was to be the moment of God's new exodus, God's great Passover, and nothing could stop Jesus going ahead to celebrate it. As one travels from Jericho to the top of the Mount of Olives, the sense of relief and excitement when you reach its summit is intense. At last, you exchange barren, dusty desert for lush, 
green growth, particularly at Passover time, at the height of spring. At last you stop climbing, you crest the summit, and there before you, glistening in the sun, is the holy city, Jerusalem. On its own, slight hill across a narrow but deep valley. Bethany and Bethpage nestle on the Jericho side of the Mount of Olives. Once you pass them, Jerusalem comes into view almost all at once. The end of the journey, the pilgrimage to end all pilgrimages, Passover time in the city of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. My dear, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent, we've been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, many centuries ago, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise. But the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today, we greet Jesus as our King. Although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by the way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with Jesus in his suffering on the cross, may we, you and me, share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Lord God of our salvation, assist us mercifully with your help, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we listen to the gospel story, let us remember that for Jesus, it's a royal occasion to be carefully planned and staged so as to make exactly the right point. The animal he chose, presumably by prearrangement with the owners, this wasn't the first time Jesus had been to Bethany, was a young foal, almost certainly a donkey's colt. Like the tomb in which Jesus would lie within a week later, it had never been used before. The disciples pick up the theme and in a kind of instant royal celebration, they spread cloaks along the road for, Je for Jesus. And down they go, down the steep path to the Kidron Valley. And the crowd starts to sing part of the psalm of praise, Psalm 118, that pilgrims always sang on the way to Jerusalem, a song of victory, a hymn of praise to the God who defeats all his foes and establishes his kingdom. Jesus comes himself as the fulfillment of the nation's hopes, answering their longings for a king who would bring peace to the earth from heaven itself. Let us hear the story as told by the gospel writer Luke in chapter 19, 28 to 40. The Lord be with you. It begins. Jesus' triumphant entry. After telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples on ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When they reached the place where the road started down, the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. 
Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. Jesus replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. But as Jesus came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now we, you and me, we pray. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. May we also, as we carry emblems in the form of blessed palm crosses that we will receive in church this very day on Palm Sunday, may we go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life the one who lives and reigns in glory with you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And again we pray, Almighty God, whose Son was crucified yet entered into glory, may we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We heard at the end of the gospel that was just read, that as Jesus approached Jerusalem, he wept. In John's gospel, Jesus weeps at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. Now here, Jesus weeps over the city. Jesus' tears are at the core of the Christian gospel. This was not a moment of regrettable weakness. It was a moment of anguish. Again and again during his long journey, Jesus had warned of God's impending judgment on the city and temple because they, like the towns of Galilee, had resisted Jesus' call for peace, for the gospel of God's grace, which would reach out in love to the Gentile world. Unless you repent, Jesus said, you will all likewise perish. Now here Jesus was, face to face with the city where Pilate had killed Galileans and would shortly kill one more. Face to face with the city where the Tower of Siloam had fallen and where before too long, towers and walls and the temple itself would come crashing down. It is an essential part of Jesus' message of warning and judgment that is uttered finally through sobs and tears. No matter where Jesus looked, he found cause for weeping. If he looked back, he saw how the nation had wasted its opportunities and been ignorant of their time of visitation while he was with them. If he looked within, he saw spiritual ignorance and blindness in the hearts of the people. They should have known who he was, for God had given them his word and sent his messengers to prepare the way. As he looked around, Jesus saw religious activity that accomplished very little. The temple had become a den of thieves, and the religious leaders were out to kill him. The city was filled with pilgrims celebrating a festival, but the hearts of the people were heavy with sin and life's burdens. As Jesus looked ahead, he wept as he saw the terrible judgment that was coming to the nation, the city, and the temple. In 70 AD, the Romans would come 
and after a siege of 143 days, kill 600,000 Jewish people, take thousands more captive, and then destroy the temple and the city. Why did all this happen? Because the people did not know that God had visited them. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. John 1, 11. Luke writes in his gospel, this very vivid scene of Jesus sobbing out a few phrases until he finally controls himself sufficiently to utter the solemn warning upon the city that has chosen to ignore the moment when God was coming in solemn visitation. The terrible judgment has been pronounced and will shortly be executed. Proce proceeds not from a stern and cold justice, but from a heart of love that wants the best for and from the people. As we reflect on, Je on Jesus' words of judgment, remember the tears. Those tears are not just the human reaction to a sad and frustrating situation. They are the tears of a God of love. As the storm clouds gather, we sense the inevitability, which Luke, in any case, highlights frequently. This is how it must be. This is how God's plan of salvation must be accomplished. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in tender love for all our human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and suffer death upon a cruel cross. May we follow the example of his great humility and share in the glory of his resurrection. We humbly ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Confession and Absolution. Give us a moment, God, to face our fears and failures, a moment to admit our need of your love. Let us bring ourselves before God, knowing all that has separated us from his love and forgiveness. Take a moment. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Together we say, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our Lord God. Amen. Listen to the words of Jesus words that we can trust. Don't be afraid. I love you. I forgive you. You are my friends, my brothers and sisters. I will always be with you. Come and follow me. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his son, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prayers of the people. Christ Jesus was obedient unto death on a cross and exalted by God. He continues to plead for all humankind. Let us join him in prayer for all of our brothers and sisters, saying, Father, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Establish peace and friendship among all earth's peoples. Let violence and enmity give way to concord. Father, 
we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew your church's longing for your reign of justice. May Christians work together to establish what is right in your eyes. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a share in Christ's exaltation to all who share his degradation, especially to those whose poverty and helplessness are exploited by the powerful. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Heal the wounds which crime has inflicted on our cities and help our judges and lawmakers to fashion a society based on trust and respect. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Hear our prayer. Open our eyes to the sins we have committed. May our repentance lead us to seek forgiveness and restore us to the paradise of your presence. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. And today, Heavenly Father, we lift to you, Russia. We ask you to quicken Putin's heart. Show him, show him the atrocities that he is committing against your people, Lord. Convict his heart. Lead him away from sin. Lead him into restoration, Lord. Lead him into repentance. Open the eyes and the ears of the Russian people so that they may see truth and not be deceived by lies. May they be, may their hearts be broken by the crimes committed against the Ukrainian people. May they reach out in love and peace, asking for forgiveness. Heavenly Father, strengthen the Ukrainian people. Hide them under the shelter of your wings. Guide them into the pathways of peace. Restore them, Lord. Restore their land in your peace and in your love. Help the nations of the world to know how to walk in this, to bring about a peaceful solution. Give us courage, your godly wisdom, and spiritual insight. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Father, the power of Christ brought forgiveness to those who crucified him. And the prayer of the thief brought him to a place with Christ at your side. Hear the prayers we now make to you and sustain your people in their need. We make our prayer through Christ, our crucified Lord. Amen. And our offering, as we lift our tithes, our offerings, and Lenten alms, let us pray together. Gracious God, the suffering and death of Jesus, your only Son, his sacrifice made in love for us makes us pleasing in your sight. We know, Lord, that alone we can do nothing, but through his sacrifice, may we receive your love and mercy. We ask this in his name. Amen. And we'd like to thank you for sending in your tithes, your offerings, and your Lenten alms. We thank you for your support of the ministries of this church, St. Andrew Anglican in Alliston, a place of God's love. Thank you. Thank you. And now our Lord's Prayer. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we walk this final pilgrimage with our Lord Jesus Christ toward his crucifixion, resurrection, and celebration of Easter Sunday, come, come and draw near with faith. In the Eucharist communion, we receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you 
and his blood, which he shed for you. Come and eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving. And together we lift our hearts saying, most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and you share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Come and let us together approach the throne room of our Lord God in remembrance of what our Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Come, come, heed the call of God's kingdom. Come. And the blessing. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those you love, here and in the hereafter, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.